Hi, I am Dr. Y. You're welcome to the part three of Dr. Y's series on hypertension. Um, sorry we couldn't take everything last week, so we had to split into two. And last week we talked about um, other causes of elevated blood pressure. We talked to you how you could diagnose hypertension. And I can remember they were talking about how you could check your blood pressure using your Android phone. Abby? Uh, no, 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 no. Actually, we told you that so far there is no particular Android application or um, iOS application or Windows application through which you could check your blood pressure. All those stuff you see are not real. They are pranks. Anything that would um, enable you to check your blood pressure would need to be attached either to your arm or to your wrist or some other high folding gadgets which we don't want to talk about. So this week we'll be starting our discussion on how you can check the correct way of checking your blood pressure using the digital sphygmo manometer as an example because anybody can use a digital sphygmo manometer. You just attach it to your hand and use it. We're going to show you how we're going to show you how it is being done. And we'll also talk to you on the complications of hypertension. We don't want you to have these complications, so we're going to talk to you on it. We're not saying it to scare you. We're just saying it so that you would know. And we're going to talk to you on how you can prevent hypertension, whether or not you have a family history. We'll talk to you on how you can prevent hypertension. And we'll finally talk to you on how you can manage hypertension. So please stay tuned, and we'll be right back. going to talk to you about how to check your blood pressure at home. First of all, you have to get some rest before checking your blood pressure. And I'm going to explain what I mean by getting some rest. You cannot check your blood pressure after you just finished having a workout in the gym or after you just finished washing clothes or after you just finished jogging or doing some exercise. Also, you need to relax for at least 30 minutes before checking your blood pressure. And you cannot also check your blood pressure after you must have drank alcohol or smoked cigarettes or marijuana or any of those things. You will get a very wrong reading. Don't forget, those things can increase your blood pressure too. But for the purpose of this discussion or for this series, I'll be talking about how to use the digital sphygmo manometer. Reason is because with, you can check your blood pressure using a digital sphygmo manometer all by yourself. Or better still, you can check your blood pressure using the digital blood pressure monitor by yourself. You don't need anybody to help you. So, you need to know that when checking your blood pressure, it is better you use your left arm. You can also use your right, but it's better you re use your left arm. So, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step pattern on how to check your blood pressure at home. First, you need to sit upright. And when I mean sit upright, I am sitting upright now. So you need to sit upright to check your blood pressure. And this is how it goes. So you roll your sleeves up and make sure that you do not have anything on your sleeve, just like this. And ensure your clothes, if you have your sleeves on, on like this, ensure that your clothes is not tight. Now, if I'm going to roll this up now, it's going to tighten this place up. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? If I'm going to roll this up, I'm going to have this place tight and once it's tight any blood pressure i get would be wrong so it's important you have a free clothing or something like this you have a free clothing and ensure that the cuff of the sphygmo manometer you're about to use is the size for your arm some people have big arms and you find out that they buy a small cuff that cannot even go into their hand not to talk of getting to the ham. So you want to make sure you get a cuff that is your size. Now, these are examples of different sizes. This first one you're seeing is the one we use in the hospital for checking the blood pressure of babies. Now, it is not complete. I just took the cuff, picture of the cuff, as you can see. This other one is the one we use for checking the blood pressure of children. That's um, children like two years, three years, four years, depending on the size of the arm. And this last one is the type we use for checking blood pressure in adults. Now, there are some cuffs that are bigger than this for those who have very big arms or fat arms now 
Ensure if you're going to buy a digital Figma manometer, make sure that the cuff you're about to buy is the correct size for your arm. And if you're going to buy it for somebody, you may need to ensure, you may need to take the measurement of the person's arm because any cuff you're going to use must cover at least two thirds of your arm, like up to this level, like you can see, and ensure that it goes around your arm at least one and a half time, meaning it goes the first time and at least half the second time. Because when applying pressure, sometimes the cuff may release itself if it is not well tight. You will see on the cuff, there are some rough edges that the other part is supposed to go in to make it stick if you're using the digital type. And if you do not get to that place, your cuff might, might likely dislodge while inflating pressure or pumping air. Also, you need to ensure that the cuff is not twisted. Like this type now we use, uh, this digital type is already locked, so you may not be able to remove it easily and it may not twist up but if you're going to if you're getting the type that can not lock like this one you have to make sure that it is not twisted or wound round ensure that the tube this tube of this figma manometer is in front of your arm because like you can see here now the tube is in front of the arm and ensure that the cuff is at the level of your heart now you can see you can see the cuff around our, our, our arm here. You can see it's at the level of the heart. And the level the heart is slightly below the breast. If it is higher than that, you will get the wrong result. If it is lower than that, you will likely get the wrong result. And once you do that, you press the start button on the device like this. And it's going to count and count. And whatever reading you get, is your approximate blood pressure. Now, I use the word approximate blood pressure because while using a digital uh, Sphygmo manometer, if you move your hand by a centimeter, in short, if you check it twice, you might not get the same reading. And like I said, not all digital Sphygmo manometers will give you the exact value you will get in the hospital, but it will give you an idea as to whether or not your blood pressure is a little bit elevated or not elevated. Now, this is the result of this, um, this blood, the blood pressure we just checked. And we cross-checked we cross with the machine we used in the hospital earlier on and we got a hundred as compared to uh, what we are seeing. So this is almost accurate or better still we say it's close to accurate. So you need to take yours to the hospital for calibration also to be sure that you are getting the correct result. Now we're going to talk about the complications of hypertension. <laughs> Complications only occur if your blood pressure is not well managed. Now, I'll tell you this over and over again, like I always say every time I have an opportunity of talking to somebody who has elevated blood pressure, I always tell them that having elevated blood pressure is just like having a bomb in your pocket. If you do not manage it very well, you are just about to detonate the bomb. And the reason is, if you have elevated blood pressure or if you've been diagnosed to have hypertension, it is important you always take your medications and check your blood pressure. Why? Once complications occur, they are usually not reversible. An example of complications that occur in hypertension is stroke. If you've ever seen someone who had a stroke before, I'm very sure you really don't like the sight of it. I usually don't like it and I wish there was a way one could actually reverse things like that. So when someone has a stroke, it simply means the person may not be able to use a part of the person's body properly. Now, some people regain, some people recover from strokes, but if someone has a stroke, there's a likelihood that same person will likely have stroke again the second time if the blood pressure is not well controlled. So, stroke is a complication of elevated blood pressure or poorly controlled hypertension. Likewise, Someone who has a poorly controlled hypertension may lose his sight, that's the person may become blind. Someone who has um, poorly controlled high blood pressure may have heart failure, and heart failure presents with things like the person has fluid in the chest and in the lungs, and that's why I said earlier on that the person may be finding it difficult to lie down flat. The person may also have fluid in the stomach, which we call ascites. The person may also have um, fluid in the legs, which may 
um, may cause have fluid in the leg, which may cause um, pedal edema, the legs may be swollen. Now, all these things I just said are just complicated features of heart failure, which we don't usually want our patients to have. And as I always plead, always take your medications and check your blood pressure regularly. Kidney failure is also a complication of poorly controlled blood pressure. And the one I usually don't talk, like talking about, but what usually happens is death. If you don't manage your blood pressure very well, you may die. And that's why I said earlier on, it's just like having a grenade, in the, a bomb in the pocket, and you just pull the ring on it. So if you have elevated blood pressure, it's very important to monitor your blood pressure and take your medications regularly and go to the hospital for a checkup. Now I'm going to talk to you about how to prevent hypertension. Now I'm going to be talking about it on six different headings and like one of my colleagues told me, he said, once you have hypertension, ensure that you use washed. Now, what is washed? The first W A S H E D, like W A S H E D, washed. The first one is W is weight loss. You have to ensure that you lose some weight. Why? I said it earlier, and I don't want to go back to that again. You, you need to stop taking alcohol. If you take alcohol, you need to stop taking alcohol. You need to stop smoking, you need to stop substance abuse, and you have to change your sedentary lifestyle. So all those ones are under S. You need to get health education like we're giving to you right now. So you need this health education to ensure that you do not get a complication or you need to know how to manage hypertension. You need to do exercise regularly and I'm not going to go into, I'm not I'm not just going to tell you to start exercising and now you need to see your doctor you need to go to the hospital so that they can recommend the required exercise for your condition and you need to reduce work on your diet and on the diet we want you to reduce the salt on or the salt you put in your food now if you do all these things you can prevent hypertension and you can manage hypertension properly hypertension is not a death sentence some people sometimes assume once they tell them you have hypertension, they just have this feeling like, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. No, 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 that's not true. Once you have hypertension or once you are told you have an elevated blood pressure, you just need to manage, you manage it. Everybody has issues in life and hypertension is just one of those issues anybody can have. So if you have or you're told you have, I, and you have hypertension, I have an elevated blood pressure. It is important you have a positive mindset and your mindset is I am going to live long. You're supposed to live long and live long and long and enjoy life. Now, first of all, I'd like to let you know that we do not treat hypertension. We manage hypertension. And while managing hypertension or managing high blood pressure, we look for the cause of the high blood pressure. Remember we said earlier on that there are several causes of high elevated blood pressure which include things like the thyroid problem, which could include things like um, kidney problems, which could include um, several other things which we talked about earlier on. So in managing high blood pressure, we look for the primary cause of the high blood pressure. And once we can, if we find the primary cause and it's treatable, we treat it. Now, most times once we find, if we could find the primary cause and we treat it, the blood pressure comes down. And that's why when you come to the hospital, we may conduct, we may tell you to do some tests, um, several tests in the hospital. You do several tests, x-rays, ECG, blood tests. We, we just want you to do these things to see if we can find the primary cause of this high blood pressure. Now, after we've done all those tests for you and we find the likely cause, we'll place you on some drugs which are antihypertensives. And the antihypertensives we give to you will depend on the cause or the likely etiology of the elevated blood pressure. Now, it is very wrong for you to just go and meet somebody and say, ah, you're using this drug for your blood pressure. Give it to me. I want to use it. My doctor or they said I have blood pressure. No, 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 it's wrong because the person we are giving that particular drug to might be having a kidney problem and you might actually be having an issue with um, your, the thyroid swelling or your neck or it may not even be that. The person may be having problem with his heart while you might just be having something that is not even as bad as that. So if you just go to collect your friend's drugs and you use it, you might actually be looking for more trouble. 
It is very important to know that if you are diagnosed to have hypertension, you have to take your drugs regularly and ensure you go to the hospital for regular checkup. We believe in miracles, but it's very important you allow us. You know, we also wear white, um, like I tell people, we also woolies. We also wear white. So it's important you go to the hospital and meet your healthcare provider to confirm whether or not the miracle has happened. If you come to the hospital and we notice your blood pressure has been well controlled, there are some things we do, some steps, sometimes we may even reduce the dosage of your drug and on the long run even stop you from taking the drugs. If the blood pressure has been well controlled for a long period of time and we notice your blood pressure is probably going too low, we can stop it. And that's why our motto says in the health sector, we care, God heals. Why? Because we believe God can still do something. And if God does something and your blood pressure is controlled, we'll stop you from taking the drugs. So far so good, we've talked about other causes of hypertension, we've talked about, we've told you um, how to diagnose hypertension, we've told you the warning signs and the possible symptoms you may see in somebody who has elevated blood pressure, we've told you how to check your blood pressure at home, and we've told you about the complications of high blood pressure and how you can prevent elevated blood pressure. And finally, we just talked about how to manage high blood pressure. Thank you very much for being part of the show once again. If you have questions, please send your questions in to through our social media channels like you can see over here and you've been seen rolling through since morning and we'll be glad to hear from you. Thank you very much and until next episode, stay tuned and remain strong and healthy.